Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Southeast Radio. Well, last week, Dubliner Sharon Keegan secured £100,000 in investment for her business, Peachy Lean, on the UK series of Dragon's Den. Sharon's pitch, whilst ultimately successful, was a very poignant and emotional moment in her life and Sharon joins me now to tell us her story. Sharon, you're no stranger to the model county, having spent plenty of time here in Wexford Town over the years. Thanks, Carl. It's such a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me on. I did. My dad used to have a a house there in the fight up by Billy Kelly's pub facing the school. So I spent many a summer up the town in Wexford. Now we'll be discussing your successful journey to the UK Dragon's Den, which some of our listeners may have seen last week. But first, I'd like to find out about your journey prior to starting Peachy Lean. Yeah, so I started business when I was about 19. I always had like an kind of infatuation with the word entrepreneur. My dad was an entrepreneur, a businessman, and I kind of always wanted to really impress him. So um, I started a business when I was 19 selling tannin products. So unfortunately, yes, I am responsible for all the um, the orange looking people walking around. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I imported products from the UK into Ireland and we started tannin uh, businesses and then look, I, I was taken on then by one of the major businesses called Sandra Pay to run sales for them here in Ireland. And after working for that company, obviously, like everybody, I went traveling, kind of, you know, had a bit of free time and then came back working for the Golden Pages on their digital team. So I was selling um, websites. And then from there, I ended up going to the Glastonbury Festival, right? And seeing this queue that was about two miles long for these pie products called Pie Minister Pies. And I got into the queue, obviously being nosy as I as you are, and got to the top of the queue. And the pie pie product was so spectacular that I just thought, oh my god, Ireland has to have these products. So I ended up bringing them products, uh, importing them products into the UK, and actually working for the company, running their operations here in Ireland. But in 2015, the sterling went really, really high, and um, unfortunately, we had to pull that business really quickly. I think it was within four weeks. We pulled it and um, I was pregnant, 33, and yeah, it was just really, it was a bit of a dark point in my life and had to kind of rebuild myself again from there. Now, around that same time, Sharon, I believe you also suffered from postnatal depression. Talk to us about how that ultimately led you on the path to starting Peachy Lean. So, so when I had my child uh, in 2015, after I'd been made redundant from Prime Minister, I um, I found it really difficult, Carl, to be honest with you, because I I was after being so busy my whole life, and business was a big thing to me. Being an entrepreneur, being it was kind of a little bit my ego. Do you know, I felt like it was it was who I was, and then to go from that to be at home with a baby all day, I just really, I'll be honest with you, struggled. Um, and a part, I felt like a, a part of me was lost. Um, so I did struggle with postnatal depression. And to pull myself out of that, I had kind of put on a lot of weight. So I went back to the gym, but I couldn't find any products on the market that would hold in my big mum tum and my shifted pelvis. I used to wear these spanks underneath, the le- in, underneath my leggings. And I decided, you know what? If I could build a product that had the spank support in the leggings um, and it was soft enough to wear in the gym, maybe I could build a community or some sort of um, movement around really focusing on women's mental health and getting them moving for their mindset. And that's where it started. I sent a Spanx and a legging to a manufacturer. The manufacturer sent me back a sample. I put it onto like this kind of uh, landing page website, took a few photographs of my friend who's the most amazing looking uh, PG bomb. <laughs> and that was it. It took off. We sold like 224 units before I even had the product. So Sharon, that literally was the birth of Peachy Lean back in 2018. So how have you brought this inclusive activewear brand for women to the masses? So it's funny, like an entry to market in in something like this is so small. So like back, you know, back way, like, you know, years ago when I was selling even food products, you used to have to meet buyers, you know, walk into retailers, negotiate margin and price with, with, with people and everyone would get their cut. With a direct-to-consumer product like this, like you can literally build a product yourself, put it onto a website, put it onto Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, Google Sales. Like 
and you are selling to a global market, you know? It's insane how like the 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 um the market is now a global market because you're selling on, on an online e commerce platform direct direct to the consumer. So the margin is you know, the margin is made for us, for our brand, which allows us then to reinvest in, you know, new products um you know, and content, really building that message around women and um, and eventually men. We will do this for men too, but at the moment it's women because it's so true to my heart and so much, you know, ingrained in what I've gone through. And Sharon, how influential was the UCD Innovation Academy and the DCU Female High Flyers Entrepreneurship Academy to you during the early stages of the business? So I have a lot, a lot, a lot to... Um, to, I suppose, say about both of them businesses because they were uh, absolutely paramount in building my confidence. So in 2015, when I had Liam and I I went back to college in UCD, I'd never studied for a degree. I kind of had a bit of a a chip on my shoulder, even about the way, like, my my lack of communication skills. And um, I would have been terrified to ever do a pitch or, you know, present anything. Um, and the UCD Innovation Academy is 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 like play school for adults. It's like going back to recreate yourself. And I would absolutely recommend that course to any any adult in life that's just kind of stuck and doesn't know where to go. And it really will reinvent the way that you think, the mindset. It will shift you into a better confidence. And um, it's a just incredible learning by doing program. And then the Female High Flyers, the DCU Female High Flyers, is an exceptional program for females who might have started a business and they're kind of just getting started and they're looking for maybe some funding or um, to accelerate their business. It teaches you about pitching and how to get gain funds and ent- introduce you to Enterprise Ireland and funding programs. But it's also a great network for women to get together and actually support each other. Like some of the women that I started off with in the DCU Female High Flyers are my absolute best friends in business now. And we've all come up the ranks together. And it's so amazing to see them do so well. Um, And I do want to give credit to Neve Collins, actually, who's the uh, program coordinator there, who is just the most exceptional woman. And I remember getting my, my position on the program on the first day in 2018 and I, I I just found out that I fell pregnant on my second baby and I have to be really honest with you I thought I'd never finish the course because I was pregnant and I never forget Neve Collins saying to me Sharon like you know what it would be an even a bigger inspiration if you do it pregnant and I did and it was just it's such a, a amazing achievement. Fantastic. Now, you mentioned something that was very interesting and it caught my ear earlier on, and that's about the importance of you building a community, or as you called it, a movement with Peachy Lane. So how did you go about doing that? And how much of a driver of growth has that been for the business? Yeah, like I think that any business that doesn't um, speak to their core c- customer you know, are really missing a trick. And I think, look, from day one, I wanted to build a community because I genuinely needed the support as well. So I kind of wanted to be in a big group of women who, you know, um, kind of connected together. They were ambitious. They wanted to support each other. They were, you know, willing to, to speak and vulnerably say what they wanted to do with their lives. So that's the idea behind it. It was like, okay, well, let's build a product, let's create the community. And we've had people, Carl, like just honestly, completely change their lives. Like one lady um, couldn't swim, was terrified of the water, absolutely terrified of the water. And we as a community um, encouraged her and she finished her first triathlon in 2019, uh, in the summer of 2019. We had a woman that lost a hundred pounds. Now that was she, and she's a she's a major celebrity now. And then we had we had ladies like overcome, you know, set up businesses, overcome like momentous fears, and we're all now connected together and supporting each other. And it's not just about say Peachy Lean; it's all about their business too. So it's a great little network, and um, I think everybody now coming out of COVID and out of this pandemic needs that support. And as they say, Sharon, contacts turn into contracts. And the only difference is the letter R, which stands for relationships. That's so true. Now, I know that you were always an avid fan of Dragon's Den in the UK, and it was something that you watched with your dad and brother. But the decision to apply for this series was very poignant, as it followed a very sad time for your own family. Yeah, I'll take a deep breath even when I discuss this, because it's still very raw, but... 
in 2019 I applied for the show and actually was called for a screen test on the 23rd of January and that was my brother Alan's birthday and I remember coming back from the screen test in Manchester and telling them all about it. He was delighted because it was a big thing in our family. Every Sunday night we'd watch The Dragon's Den on BBC One or it was actually BBC Two at the time and um, we'd, you know, we'd kind of had hedge our bets on who was going to get investment and we'd always talk shop afterwards so it was a real kind of family um like love affair with the show and then in March unfortunately um, March of 2020 two days into lockdown my amazing brother Alan passed away and it was heartbreaking for our family as you can imagine he was only 35 he had two beautiful children and a gorgeous wife and it was just heartbreaking like we didn't get a funeral we had no it was just I can't even describe the pain it's that you know it was really really tough so the the show had rang me actually um, just after Alan's death my inner critic or my inner dragon as I would say was telling me no 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 you can't do this you know your brother is it, just passed on the grief the grief was so immense I couldn't even function really at that, that point point. and I remember my father saying to me at the time Sharon you have to do this like this is for him like do this for him and um, you know it was just oh, it was really really tough but anyway we slayed the inner dragon <laughs> and then we went to the show and they, they allowed me to bring dad with me which was a great great support but when I was actually there it was just so so unusual I would be very I would probably be a very anxious person like I'm quite confident uh, to, to, to people but on the inside I was very anxious and when we got there, this calm, like I really mean this, when I was walking up to the lift, the calm I felt, I felt, I felt so calm. And I remember like saying to my dad, sorry, no. Take your time. Oh God, sorry. Um, I remember saying, dad, like, oh, sorry. I just felt like he was there, you know, because I was just so calm and I went in and um, yeah, look, it was an amazing opportunity, and I, I feel like I could have nearly not done that if I had have listened to the inner fear. I would have never achieved to what I've achieved today, and I'm just so thankful to my father, and to my brother, and just for I don't know, maybe maybe push me to do it. And with that level of calmness surrounding you at the time, Sharon, did you get a sense of how well the pitch was going when you were in the den? Yeah, like um, I came out today and afterwards, I, I'll tell you about when I was in there, but I came out and I said to my dad, they're not dragons, they're kittens. He's like, <laughs> but they were honestly so lovely. Like they were just amazing. They were so lovely. And, you know, the show is edited very well and there's a lot of tension and you don't know what's going to happen. But when, while I was in there, I had, you know, all my numbers. It was a flawless, I felt like I felt very confident, like that was a flawless pitch. And I did feel very that some of the dragons are very engaged. Like Sarah Davies was engaged from the very start. She just loved it. Um, Tej Lavani very much engaged from the start and was lovely because at one point I did break down. I obviously I it was a very emotional time. Peter, who's usually a very um, aggressive dragon, was just the most wonderful soft soul and was you know very complimentary um on the day and said to me that my brother would be very proud which again started me off <laughs> i'll be known as the winger i tell you like it's just such a raw and emotional period in my life and i'm very thankful for it it's just such like a, an amazing um energy wave coming at us right now all positive so it's great and of course you definitely had that wave of luck which is well in the night because you got offers to bring tree dragons on board yeah, and like, who would have ever thought that would happen, you know? <laughs> like, I had visions of me getting, you know, slated, like, absolutely slated for bringing, a, you know, uh, an active wear range to to the den. But, yeah, to get offers from from the dragon I wanted, first of all, who was Sarah. Um, Tuca, I wanted for, you know, manufacturing experience. And Tej, which I never thought Tej would come in, because Tej is e-commerce tech kind of um, tech giant. And... To have him on board is absolutely phenomenal because he has such a massive reach, global reach in, in the wellness industry with his uh, Vita Biotics range. So to have um, the experience of like a giant e-commerce giant 
then the QVC queen, and then you have the retail guru. So it was, it's just a match made in heaven, the dream team. So Sharon, after the pitch, you were offered £100,000 for an 11% stake in your business. But of course, once the cameras stopped rolling, you then move into the due diligence stage of the process. So how was that coming along? So they wanted actually 30% of the company and the due diligence actually is still going on at the moment. But the Dragons, um, they wanted 30% and the company, like the company we pitched was kind of a a completely different company to when the due diligence stage, even in the due diligence stage right now. So the Dragons right now, like the, the offers, like we're still going back and forth with diff- different things. And we kind of agreed to let the, let the, let the then go, like as in let the airing of the show go and revisit looking at a different valuation. And, and that's very, like we're all very happy with that. So, um, but, but what, one thing I want to say with Dragons is they are so helpful. Like even without, everything signed, sealed and delivered. Like they've been in the factory, they've been, you know, getting better prices on fabrics. Sarah's been introducing me to all of her contacts in QVC shopping channels. You know, they've they've all been on Twitter, including Deborah Mead. And like, you know, they're just so supportive. And like, I don't know, like if there's anyone listening, you know, in Wexford or beyond, anywhere and listen to the show that that has something that they really want to pursue, a dream, a passion, a project, whatever it is, like, take it from me. Please don't listen to your inner dragon because that inner dragon will have you safe in in your bed doing nothing, doing nothing with your life. Tell me about the immediate boost in sales following your appearance on the show. (laughs) Oh, my God, like... It's insane. I can't give you the number because we haven't counted, but I'll say thousands and thousands and thousands of orders. We've had orders from Australia, America, Japan, Philippines, the whole of Europe. Um, massive, a massive drive in the UK and a huge support from the Irish public, which, to be honest, we were overwhelmed by because I think at one stage, I think the Irish sales um, were surpassing the UK sales. It was insane, like insane. And Sharon, of course, whether it's 11% or 30%, you relinquish in terms of equity in the business. You're definitely due a cheque shortly for £100,000 from the Dragons. Mm. So talk to me about your plan for that investment. What's it going to be used for? So you, so um, that, that money will be used towards um, the UK market and really kind of establishing it establishing our brand there so obviously in Ireland now we've had a big push but we just launched the UK website there just before the show on the Wednesday before the show um, and then obviously with the three da- dragons um, endorsement and investment it's just really building that market like going from a market of you know four and a half maybe five million to a, a market of 60 million it's just such a giant leap you know for us so we're really going to spend that money on establishing um, in the around the marketing and the core product line and building the the UK market. And then Enterprise Ireland are just a phenomenal support for us. They're um, also a partner of ours. And they have opened up doors in the Australian market for the end of the year. And of course, now the fact that you're bringing Three Dragons on board, they're very focused on trade sales over a three to five year period. Is that what your mind is focused on now as well? Growing this business to eventually sell it? Absolutely. So like, um, that's everyone's dream as an entrepreneur, you know, like I'm, I'm certainly invested in, 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 in this emotionally, like it is my third baby, you know, but at the same time, everybody wants an exit. And I think that it would be fantastic to build something that, you know, the core roots are, is, is Irish and um, build it to a substantial, substantial level and then see, you know, a bio. That would be the dream for anybody, any young entrepreneur. Um, but yeah, there's a three to five year plan. And as Sarah said, like my plan was four million in, in two and a half, two and a half years. And her plan is 20 million in two and a half years. So we'll have to see how it goes. Well, if you've just tuned in, that was Sharon Keegan from Peachy Lean. And in echoing Peter Jones's sentiments in the den, I've no doubt that Sharon will continue to do her late brother Alan proud as she continues her successful journey in business. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Southeast.